Here is an outsider's summary of the secret technology of seeing, hearing, and sending images and sounds directly to brains from remote locations without ever having to touch the body of the owner of the brain. There really are two aspects to much of the secret technology, sound and light. This involves mainly the conversion of sound and light to an electronic signal, the storage of those electronic signals, and the conversion back from the electronic signal to sound and light. Another key aspect of this secret technology is a find of major, major importance. The finding that neurons, cells in every brain, can be excited to fire by remote stimulation using a beam of light particles. This spectacular find must have sent ripples through the planet and resulted in the ability to send images, sounds, and to even trigger muscles to move in any brain from a remote location. Here is a summary of this story as best as I know it. In 1783, Luigi Galvani made a frog leg move by putting the frog leg muscle between one plate of copper and one plate of tin. This led to the first electric battery and years later to the remote movement of muscles by beam. The telegraph was invented in 1795. To use a telegraph, a wire has to connect two people that want to send and receive signals to each other. The circuit is opened and closed to spell letters. In 1800, William Herschel found that an invisible region of light, separated by a prism, produces the most heat by using a thermometer, and this is the first record of infrared light. The first permanent photograph was created in 1826 by French inventor Joseph Niepce. In 1838, Samuel Morse sent the first telegraph message across two miles of wire. The first commercial telegraph was wired in Britain in 1839 and was a 13 mile wire. Also in 1839, Alexander Becquerel was the first to observe the photoelectric effect, how light causes more current to flow in metal. The photoelectric effect will serve as the basis for the electronic recording of light. In 1844, Morse sent a telegraph message from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore, Maryland. Soon many people with telegraph devices were connected by single lines of wire. In 1855, Parks invents the first plastic, pyroxylin, from cellulose. Eventually, plastic will be used to make thin strips which allow images and audio to be recorded and stored in large quantity. A year later, in 1856, celluloid, the first thermoplastic, will be invented. Unlike thermosetting plastics, thermoplastics can be reshaped when heated. In 1860, the first telephone is invented in Germany by Philip Rees. Sixteen years later, in 1876, the telephone will be reproduced in the USA, and telephone signals will eventually replace the telegraph signals on the ever-growing network of wires. Different from the telegraph, with a telephone, sound is converted to a currency. The more intensity the molecules of air in the sound wave have, the more current in the wire there is. In this same year, Tom Edison invented the first practical microphone, the carbon microphone. A year later, in 1877, Thomas Edison was the first to record sound on a cylinder phonograph. Already at that time, a telephone call could be recorded onto a phonograph cylinder by simply placing a telephone near the cylinder. And so the techniques of recording phone calls in more automatic and quiet ways probably were vigorously developed by Bell, Edison, and many others. Probably very soon after the invention of the telephone, the telephone company, AT&T, which has a monopoly over the telephone wires because of the great expense and upheaval of working with government to allow telephone poles and wires to be put on government land, started recording all the phone calls that people make. Since AT&T owns these phone lines, the information on those lines must also be considered their property, although the issue of privacy might conflict with this. 
people in the government, in particular police and military, the major media companies, and the wealthy may have forced AT&T to share these recorded phone calls with them, or they may simply buy these recordings from the phone company. These recordings provide them with valuable information about the public. Clearly, many people want to hear inside people's houses all the time, even when the phone was not in use, and this would be possible by using microphones connected to the phone wire. Since there was a phone wire in many people's houses, devices such as microphones could be connected to the phone wire to transmit sounds from inside people's houses back to the telephone company stations to be recorded. Perhaps some kind of switch was invented to allow many microphones and a telephone to operate simultaneously by alternating their signals fast enough so that there is no loss in audio, or perhaps other wires were secretly installed in all houses. All these devices use the telephone company wires, sending their information to be recorded initially onto wax cylinders, then perhaps the Berliner records, and then plastic tape, either by light or magnetically, at the phone company stations. Vast recordings of audio from phone calls and hidden microphones began to accumulate at AT&T and in government warehouses. A year after this, in 1878, Edison distributes direct current DC electricity to customers, which requires a wire from a central generator to each customer. In 1880, George Eastman manufactures, manufactured gelatin dry photographic plates. With W.H. Walker, Eastman invents a holder for a roll of gelatin-coated paper. By 1886, over 150,000 people in the USA owned telephones, so clearly a systematic wiring of people's houses was underway by this early date. In 1887, William Abney in England creates the first infrared photographic emulsion, which goes to about 3 micrometers wavelength in the near infrared. This may or may not have led to the first seeing of eyes and thought by Pupin in 1910. Also in 1887, Hannibal Goodwin's invention of nitrocellulose film base was the first transparent flexible film. The following year, Emile Reynaud developed the first perforated film stock. In 1888, Hertz is the first to detect beams of photons with radio frequency using an alternating electric current. This will lead to all wireless communication, which is communication by using photons, generally speaking, although perhaps other particles, ions, etc., can be used. Also in 1888, Almond Strouger invents the automatic telephone exchange which consists of a rotary dial the customer uses, which opens and closes the circuit a number of times, represented by the digit dialed, and a stepping switch at the telephone exchange, allowing customers to automatically connect to as many as 100 other people without the need for an operator to physically connect the lines. Eastman was the first major company to mass-produce plastic film in 1889 when Eastman realized that the dry gelatino-bromide emulsion could be coated onto strips of clear plastic instead of paper. Also in 1889, Emil Berliner invented the flat-disc phonograph record for mechanically recording sounds. It seems clear that phonograph records and before that cylinders were used to record private phone calls in the 1800s, and these recordings may still be stored in secret places within the telephone companies and the governments of Earth waiting to reach the ears of the many interested people now. In 1892, William Dixon, chief engineer with Edison Laboratories, and Thomas Edison, using 35mm plastic film, invent the first motion pictures. In 1893, Edison shows moving pictures created on a celluloid strip of film. In theory, these kinetoscope movie cameras could be placed in people's houses and the film retrieved later, but because of the noise and labor involved in retrieving the cameras, probably cameras in people's houses must wait for the conversion of an image to an electronic signal.